we've talked a lot about uh, systems thinking rooted in the idea of ecological systems. Um, is it really valid to apply that to social and organizational systems given some of the differences such as the fact that you know there's no values in um, in ecological right. systems? Yeah well this is um, a question uh, with which I struggled for years and years. I mean I've uh, really went through this in discussions with people and I wrecked my brain of how to solve this and uh, the book I mentioned before, The Hidden Connections, is a book where I think I resolve this question and I think it's uh, one of the first, if not the only book, that really extends the systems approach to the social domain, integrating the biological, the cognitive and the social. And uh, I think it's the middle one, the cognitive, which is the key to integration of the biological and the social. So first of all, um, I should say that uh, this framework is based on uh, a belief which is supported by science but it's still a, an assumption and that is that uh, nature does not create anything out of a vacuum, that evolution proceeds through uh, a variation on existing patterns. Life again and again uses the same molecules and also the same patterns, the same networks, the same cycles, the same metabolic pathways to create new forms. And the study of evolution shows us that for billions of years this has happened. And so I believe that life in the social domain has very important similarities with with biological life and the similarities are the patterns of organization that communities organize themselves as networks whether it's ecological communities or human communities because life organizes itself as networks so so that is my starting point and once i have that starting point I can then say, well, what are the similarities and differences between biological and human networks? And as you said, values is, is one of them, but there's much more uh, than that. And what I have discovered is that all the differences between the social world and the biological world somehow are rooted in a property of human consciousness, which also evolved from the cognitive dimension of life, you know, from the bacteria on over the, the whole range of evolution to the emergence of a primitive consciousness or primary consciousness that we share with all mammals to, you know, the higher uh, human consciousness, which we also largely share with the great apes. So uh, human consciousness allows us some, to do something which is very critical for social phenomena, namely to hold mental images. I can have an image of something I would like to do tomorrow and therefore I can plan, I can have a purpose, I do something for a purpose. I can also have an image of a structure or a, a human organization, the shape of, of a human organization, and I can design. So design is a human element, although you know people like Janine Benius maybe mention the design of a blade of grass, that's a metaphor, it's not really a design because there are no designers in nature. This is a human way. The holding of mental images allows us to plan, to have a purpose, to have design, and also it introduces conflict because uh, you and I may have different ideas of what to do tomorrow for instance suppose we were going to go out together tomorrow you know I want to do something you want to do something else so there's conflict and that happens everywhere in human society and together with conflict there's values because what I want to do is more valuable to me and what you want to do is more valuable to you so different visions of the future um, imply different values and a difference in values implies conflicts and then how do we solve conflict? We resolve it through power. Either 
you know, power by, by you know, force or the threat of force or power by persuasion or power by, I don't know, uh, financial remunerations, incentives they're called, financial in incentives or other types of incentives, which is part of persuasion maybe. So the various ways of power. But you see, all these things hang together. The ability of holding mental images, the ability of abstraction, values, conflict, power. And that's the big difference between um, between a biological system and human social systems. So when I extended the systems approach to the social domain, I had to not only compare the networks and feedback and cycles and things, which many people have done, but I also asked myself, for instance, when we talk about a network of communications, uh, I not only asked myself who talks to whom, and how often do they talk to each other? And there are people who are map these things, you know, network theories and so on. But I also ask the question, what do they talk about? Because you, you can't understand a human uh, community without understanding the meaning of the conversation. And so um, in my synthesis, I defined uh, four perspectives. The perspective of matter, which uses the language of physics and chemistry, the perspective of form, which uses the abstract language of, say, complexity theory, patterns of organization, then the perspective of process, which, uh, you know, interlinks the two, and in living systems then uh, ends up being cognition, cognition as a process. And finally, the fourth perspective is the per perspective of meaning, which is the hu human perspective, the perspective of human consciousness. And so once you have all these four dimensions, <coughs> then you can indeed extend the systems approach from biology to uh, social phenomena. But you have to be very careful to, to really, and you can't do it just by using systems theory. You have to have input from uh, the humanities, from philosophy, anthropology, political science, uh, and so on.